is I put together a really quick presentation just to try and explain what we're really up to. There's been a lot of uh, crazy rumors about Gaikai over the last you know, week or so, so um, I thought this might help make it clear what we're actually doing, like what's really going on here. Um, a question that I used to try when we first started the company, I would say to the publishers, you know, there's a certain amount of pe people that um, are not clicking your buy button. They, they're sitting there and they're going, oh my god, $60, and they can't make a decision. Just let us have a go at those people. You know, the ones that didn't click buy, just let us use some cloud gaming on them and see if that, if that helps. And, and, um, and so how are we going to do it? The answer is we surveyed over 20,000 gamers and we asked them the question, what influence buy a game. It doesn't matter what way you ask gamers this question, you can phrase it any way, you can hide the question any way, they will always choose the number one option is to try the game. And, um, and, and what's really crazy is the game business puts most of its money down here into uh, TV commercials and standees and, and um, banner advertising and things like that. Um, this is uh, data from Megan, which is, they asked a different question, which is where do gamers want their advertising money in their money in currency? Um, hey, how are you? Um, where gamers want advertising money spent, the number one choice is always uh, game demos. So knowing this, the companies must make it really easy to try their games, right? Um, well, actually, no. This is a great example, World of Warcraft. I use it as an example because it's the number one game in its category, and it's um, it's actually surprisingly painful to just try World of Warcraft. Like, hey, just what is that? People keep talking about this thing. I hear about it all the time. What is it? There's a, a legal agreement you have to go through. You have to fill out your form. It's having problems with a password. It's really picky. Um, typically, to install a game like this takes around 30 to 40 clicks um, and with forms and the legal agreements. There we go. Let's legal agreement number two. And he's now installing the application. So I, I said to Blizzard, why is this so difficult? Why is this so painful? And their response was, what are you talking about? This is the new version. This is like way better than it used to be. And, and yet, when you look at it, you see stuff like a grayed out button that you can't click, which says play on it. And that's the kind of stuff that really bugs gamers. Um, and uh, if we wait, if we're patient, uh, we'll start downloading. Come on, you can do it. There it goes, nine gigabytes to download. And then um, you'll see on the clock here, 40 minutes later, there's the play button. It clicks on the play button. And legal agreement number three. Then legal, you gotta scroll all the way to the bottom. Then legal agreement number four. This, and this is what we, we um, make gamers do today. And I believe very strongly that that friction is going to lose you some customers because gamers bore really, really easily. We know this for a fact, they're about the worst people you could possibly put through boredom, right? Um, and 34.9% of them are just gonna type in garbage into those forms that you, um, you make them fill out, and 316 will skip the entire product when they see the forms, so they'll just go, I'm done, um, and that's unacceptable. The big elephant in the room is the moving of data. If data's over there and I have to move it over here, that's the problem, and, and even for a, like just one gigabyte, it can take a, um, quite a lot of time. But games these days are getting much bigger. Star Wars: The Old Republic is like 28 gigs, and so it's just not convenient to move all that data around. Instant is then um, only possible if you do it directly from the cloud, and so there's. To do this, we wanted to use you know, other people's servers. Is there some way that we could just use the networks that are already out there? And but there, wasn't, there wasn't a network that was 3D, you know, with 3D servers all over the country, so we had to build it ourselves. We built the servers, Intel invested, Qualcomm invested, and NVIDIA were working incredibly closely with. We were just in their, in their keynote. And, um, and we built the fastest interactive um, network in the world. These are data centers and these are uh, the gamers that are connecting. Uh, and we're live in 88 different countries. So the, the question is, what if we could remove all the friction from the game? Like if you just took it all out, what would that actually look like? I'm just going to wiggle this by the way to keep it away. Um, um, but um, here's what it looks like. This is World of Warcraft running on an iPad. And you can see one finger lets you um, look around, two fingers lets you run, and the third finger lets you jump. And so this is the full game, no modification whatsoever, um, just running wirelessly on an iPad. And that's a good example of, of 
I mean, I really wouldn't want to, to download and install the whole of World of Warcraft when the expansion packs into my iPad, but I'd love to be able to play it on there. And that, that's, that's one of the key differences. And this is the right time because there's 1,068 games launched on the PC last year. And for you to have any kind of, sort of amount of those that you're going to have played is going to be going to be really, really high, high friction. Um, here's an example on uh, Popular Mechanics magazine. I saw this image and I sat there going, wow, the, the chainsaw business is totally screwed. Look at all these different, uh, they're all looking exactly the same now. They're, they're all the same color. Um, and you have to read into the details if you want to understand what's different. And this one over here, just in case you're wondering, happens to be the best one. Um, so wouldn't this be lame if this happened to the games business? Can you imagine that? And, and yet, coming out of E3, last year the press were saying they couldn't, uh, they couldn't spot one first-person shooter from another because they were starting to look the same. And so, this is the problem as genres mature, is for you to try all of these games and find the best one for you is actually incredibly painful. And it's every genre is the same way, so it's just it's not just first-person shooters that is painful. So gamers just want to taste, and um, currently they tend to plan their day around like I'm gonna I'm gonna start to download. I'm gonna go eat my dinner, and then I'm gonna come back and play, or I'm gonna download three at once, and I'll come back tomorrow, and they'll all be ready for me to play. Um, and that's gotta go away. So we we've been working on a technology called cloud delivery, which is a way to get the files in as fast as a way possible from A to B. So this is this is really for the people who don't have great broadband, but I'll show you an example of it working. This, it, it's quite surprising because it's not actually installing an application on your computer. This is a web page. Um, you can see the URL, and that, that web page is downloading directly into the computer. And I'll show you, um, if I skip forward here, just to, to let you see a little farther along. You can do it to about there. You can see uh, you can have uh, the developer talking about their product while it's while it's actually doing the download cycle. And so in just a few minutes, you can be playing the game locally. This is one click to get to this point on the website. You said yes, and then the second click is sure. Go ahead and start the game, and um, and it launches the game locally. So this is cloud delivery. And this is a technology we now we now have available. It's called nonlinear asynchronous progressive crowdsourced proximity accelerated file delivery, or NOLA for short. <laughs> and, um, and but cloud gaming really is for us the, the holy grail. That just means play now. And the idea that you can jump into a game and have graphics that your local machine just can't handle, or, or you could be playing a game like this at your office, um, is super cool. So the difference is cloud gaming is under a minute, cloud delivery is around five minutes, and traditional downloads 40 minutes plus, depending on what you play. This is the internet, and um, the game industry tends to think of this as where everyone is. They're out there somewhere on the internet, and if only I could get them to come to my website and buy my product, then everything would be great. And I'm willing to pay somebody to move those people onto my website and try to convert them. But you see the job they do currently right, with all of these clicks and downloads and everything else. Buying the traffic is, is the thing that determines whether you're going to survive as the industry goes digital. And a lot of companies will not survive the cost of acquisition of players. So our strategy is, why not take the game and just put it on all the gaming websites and all the retailer websites and just put the game everywhere you can and then stop paying to move all these people around. If you do that, the business changes uh, fundamentally. So the idea is move the games to the gamer and that's what cloud gaming um, allows. So what's our strategy is, uh, we asked this question, could the best video games become as instantly accessible as movies and music? If you think about when you buy a new TV or a tablet or anything, there's always the Netflix icon on there. And what sucks is there's also a Pandora icon and, a, and uh, you know, maybe a Spotify. The point is that you're getting to, to see the best movies and hear the best music, but there's never an icon for the best video games right beside it. And that's really what this is all about. Is we've got to find a way to get the best video games right there beside the best movies and music. And um, to do that, we have to make games accessible across everything. Um, and our mission for publishers is really to focus on getting every website, every device, get rid of the friction, make it, make all games try for free, please. You know, please, just you know, that's the best. That's pro gamer. 
um, and take away their risk, and then sharing easily. Sharing easily means it's 9 o'clock in the morning, and a new game just came out. They're playing it, and it's not 9.01 yet. They're already in the game. They tweeted from the game, saying, wow, this is awesome, and their friends are in and joining and playing the same game at 9.02. That's, that's what cloud gaming permits. Um, and this is possible thanks to our automatic time demo, which basically means you're playing the game for a period of time for free. And the reason it's important is because no, there is no time for the publishers to change the games and modify them and make special demos. We want the game the minute it's ready, sometimes before launch, to appear on GuideCloud, and that's what we started to do. So we care a lot about the quality of the experience and the quality of the game library. Progress-wise, um, Walmart, then, you know, they're the biggest retailer in America. Um, not, we're now the only way to place games on Walmart.com. We actually have our own guy type area in Game Center. And Best Buy decided to do a deal as well, so now the only way to place games on Best Buy is through us. And EA, you can see us um, in their site in Origin and also in their main site. Um, Ubisoft has started to build us in. And in total, we have um, about 40 different publishers that we've signed up now. Um, and this was probably the big one, which was, can we get it into YouTube? And they agreed to let us try, so we put, the, we put, you know, click and then play inside YouTube. The result of this was, um, when we studied the data, normally when they sell engagement, they sell about 15 seconds of engagement. With Gaikai, they were getting a ridiculous amount of gameplay, because people play. Like, you know, it's not like a video ad where you just check it out. It's like you click and you play, so the game becomes the advert. So, so we're, you know, basically we've created the highest engage, engaging advertising in the world right now for uh, for video games. Platforms, um, Apple and Facebook both realized that games really matter. They didn't when they launched, but but after a while they're kind of like, well, these games seem pretty important to us, and. Uh, the way that Apple did it was on the iPhone, they reduced the friction, so they made it, you could buy games on, on, on phones before Apple showed up, but it was just not anything like as easy, and, and they got a billion downloads in nine months. Don't go after lame games. Um, because you can throw a Frisbee doesn't mean you've got the game industry covered, right? The games sell in an exponential curve, and Call of Duty and stuff like that is at the top of the curve. And that's, that's what you really want to be thinking about. So we announced at CES that we're powering um, LG's gaming cloud. And, um, and, and we, we, we demonstrated some cool games on there. Um, you can come up on the booth and play games like Bulletstorm or Street Fighter. And you could also um, play in stereoscopic 3D. But today we've announced um, Samsung, so the press releases went out today. Samsung is the, is the number one consumer electronics company in the world. So there's no bigger deal that Gaikai could actually sign. They are going to become a first party. So whenever you hear Microsoft, Sony, and Nintendo, there will now be Samsung as well. And it's up to Samsung. They are so big and so powerful that they can decide just exactly how involved to get. So if they wanted to get exclusive titles, they should be able to just um, do that very easily. But Samsung are going to be powering their strategy on the gaming cloud, on the Gaikai cloud. And, um, and we, we have a demo. Um, Mike, do you want to show us a quick, uh, a quick demo? This is this is it on a uh, on a Samsung TV. The, the surprise is that um, that we're not actually. Um, going to be shipping it when we thought. So we had planned to launch this at E3 2013, but because it's already working, we've decided just to go ahead and, um, and start signing up beta, um, beta players after E3. So after the dust settles after E3, you'll see apps unlocking on Samsung TVs. You can sign up with the app, and we'll send you a controller in the mail. You get, you'll get a Logitech uh, wireless controller. And, um, and then we ask them just to keep trying games and give us feedback. What do you think? What do you think? What do you think? And if people say, this is awesome, we're going to unlock it across all the TVs in the United States uh, from Samsung. And, um, and we'll, we'll unlaunch. So the, the, I guess the twist is that this isn't like, you know, well, we signed Samsung and maybe next year we'll talk about it. It's, it's people are going to be playing this very soon. Um, and that's, that's what's kind of fun about it. It's way, way, way ahead of where we thought we'd be. Thank you, Mike. Um, so uh, that was a little bit of Street Fighter, but um, so the other thing is when we were first to stream stereoscopic, and we did that um, back at CES. The, the the other thing that we really wanted to go after was Facebook. Facebook was very important to us because it's such an enormous audience, and also they love sharing stuff. So this is guy kind of running in Facebook. Um, you, you can play this today on if you just go into Facebook and search for Gaikai. 
and you'll see um, it doesn't matter what the game is, this is Dead Rising 2 from Capcom. And you can grab the screen and resize it so that you can, it, the game really does play within the canvas page of Facebook, so it really feels like it's part of Facebook. We don't even explain to gamers anymore how this is possible. 